everybody has different techniques and these are just mine. It's what works for me. It's just my metal plank form that goes on my workbench. And there are holes periodically drilled through the top where I install clamps. I took a, a uh, drill press clamp and welded a piece of pipe nipple on the bottom of it so that it fits snugly into the bench and locks down so that I can work hands free. After these pieces are cut, these six pieces of the comb that you'll be getting your strips out of, you have to take down a little bit of the node with the sander as it helps in the splitting. The smoother the pieces are, the nice clean and even split you tend to get. So we'll head in the other room and sand off uh, a little bit of node. You don't want to take off any enamel from the strip and the, and the node itself is actually sticks up. So you, you want to stay away from the enamel on either side of the node and just take the top of the node off. And you do that by bending the piece a little bit on the sander as you sand. I'll show you right now. These, all these pieces are cut out of a single round column of bamboo and when you, when you split the bamboo in order to get the, 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 the amount of sections that you want, in this case this one piece is going to yield four tip sections of a fly rod and each fly rod is six sided. So you split the fly rod into the, uh, you split the column into six pieces. Now, as your piece runs down the split, you'll get to the node and it'll want to go off in either direction. You can force it. So if this side is thinner than that side, you can push at the node and make it split back towards the other side. You can bend it a little bit at the node. There's two pieces. Then hopefully successfully, two more pieces. I cut all of these pieces out of a single piece of bamboo, a single column of bamboo. And I'll take the round piece and when I split it, I split it in six sections because I'm making six piece rods and the tips in this case uh, I'm getting four tip sections out of this one piece that I've split and with each tip section I take one from each of the marked sections so that the tips all fish evenly and they all fish exactly the same as the next one because they're being taken from even points around the column of bamboo. Next I'd like to show you how this tool works, this tool that I invented uh, for rough cutting my cane. I have this planing form and I clamp my pieces into the, pl into the metal planing form and my form is actually set to the uh, taper of the rod that, that I'm trying to produce. The, 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 the V that's notched into the form actually can be adjusted and it tapers down so that when I go into the hand planing process I already have that taper and basically I'm just taking long curls of bamboo off and it makes for quick work and an accurate fly rod.
pretty close to my 60. Uh, it, once I get that angle to, to 60, and I know I have a good angle on this side, if the other angle is slightly off, I mark the side that's at 60. So when I go back to actually do the hand planing, the 60 degree angle goes in the, the form first so that I can plane the other side back to a proper 60 degree angle. Then I can start flipping the piece back and forth and planing it down nice and evenly. It's all about establishing the angle. Ready for a run? The way this works, it's a cam that this rides in a slot. I took a stainless steel uh, threaded bolt, put a stainless steel locking nut on the top, and then I took a, a, a wing nut and I put a spring on this side of the wing nut to apply tension to keep it to keep it even and then on the cam side I drilled a hole in the wing nut for the pin to slip through so I tighten the cam down and it holds the piece in place these tensioners are spring steel and they're sprung in both directions so they can move up and down so any inconsistencies of the bamboo uh, the pressure will be kept on yet it will flex to any inconsistencies and then the, 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 the smaller that the piece gets in your groove the more material you cut off the more you lower your tensioners applying more pressure and keeping it in the groove and you'll notice uh, there are some marks on the metal playing form themselves that look like they've been hit with a router. And, <laughs> and that's why this piece of spring steel is on here, because it actually holds the piece as you move it down the form from kicking out and falling off the form and actually having the, the blade hit the form and gouge it. One more piece to be cut and these, uh, the, these pieces are ready to be attacked with a hand plane and a file. A thinner fly rod, thinner pieces and thinner section is going to deliver energy to the tip slower. And that, that slow delivery of energy means that your line starts to move forward more gently. Uh, and the, the, the turning of the line is, is on a more gentle arc. And it's slower so that your, you, you, your loop that's created by your fly at the end of your line is more open and gentle which is perfect for presenting a dry fly. A thicker, stouter rod is going to deliver the energy to the tip at a much faster rate. And delivering at a faster rate means that the turnover of the end of your line is quicker and that loop is tighter at the end, which is great for casting distance and casting, and casting it very straight and accurately. But it's, it was not going to give you the kind of delicate dry fly presentation that you would want out of a rod that I will be making with these particular sections.